Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video. And today I am finally continuing my retro reviews with the first sequel in the Godzilla franchise, Godzilla Raids Again. Now this one is has an interesting history with titles and distribution. And it's also the very first time that Godzilla would face off against another monster. Now, I mentioned before, I actually saw this movie before seeing Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and the American version of the 1954 original, of course. The reason for this is because the Godzilla movie marathon that aired on WPIX 11 in the New York area played Godzilla Raids again right after Godzilla's Revenge, and then went ahead and played the 1956 King of the Monsters. Of course, uh, with this, I've got a lot to talk about, so sit back, relax, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and let's get this monster action started. Shortly after the original 1954 classic, Gojira, was released in Japanese theaters, Toho was quite pleased with the film's success. They quickly pushed for a sequel to be made right away, hoping to not lose the momentum of audience excitement. Unfortunately, director Ishiro Honda was working on another film at the time, and so, instead of waiting for him to finish, Motoyoshi Oda took on the director's chair. A mere six months after Gojira's theatrical release, Godzilla Raids Again was released in Japan on April 24th, 1955, and was considered a mild success. Its original Japanese title loosely translates to Godzilla's Counterattack. Like its predecessor, Godzilla Raids Again is a black and white film, however it handles the drama and monster action quite differently. Instead of the worry about ships out at sea and the scare of nuclear fallout, a human cast of characters from the city of Osaka try to live their lives with the knowledge that Tokyo was destroyed by Godzilla. What's interesting about this cast is the optimism seen among them, despite the events that happen around them, especially considering it was 10 years after the end of World War II. The story follows two pilots, I'm gonna butcher their names here so I apologize that for in advance, but Tsukioka and Kobayashi who hunt for schools of fish in a tuna cannery company in Osaka. Because of engine trouble, Kobayashi is forced to land near Owato Island, a fictional uninhabited island. Sukioka comes to his rescue, and the two see Godzilla engaged in battle with a spiky Ankylosaurus-like monster. Their fight causes the monsters to fall off a cliff into the ocean below, and the two pilots return home to report to Japanese authorities. Returning for a guest appearance from the previous film is Dr. Yamane, once again played by Takashi Shimura. After watching footage of Godzilla destroy Tokyo, Dr. Yamane explains that the first monster did in fact die, and that this Godzilla was a second member of the same species. This ties well with the ending of the first film's warning that if we continue to use nuclear weapons, more monsters like Godzilla will continue to appear. But now they not only have to deal with one monster, but two, as the Ankylosaurus monster, named Angerus, is also present to face off against Godzilla. Since all the research on the Oxygen Destroyer was destroyed along with Sirizawa, and the fact that conventional weapons are useless against the monsters, Dr. Yamane suggests the use of flares to keep the monsters away from the coast of Japan. Although this plan would seem successful, a series of antics caused by a prison break brings Godzilla and Angerus to battle on the shores of Osaka. Their battle sets much of Osaka ablaze, even destroying the famous Osaka Castle. The escaped prisoners also meet their end when the monsters cause a subway to be flooded. I have to make mention of the costumes used for the monsters. Unlike the previous film, the suit for Godzilla was made thinner and lighter, which allowed Hiro Nakajima to move around easier as he had to battle with another suit actor of Katsumi Tezuka as Angerus. Because the costume had difficulty opening and closing its mouth, all scenes for Godzilla's atomic breath used a new stylized hand puppet, which had a ghastly looking set of teeth.
and came equipped with a water spray to depict the atomic breath itself. The Anguirus costume was a spiky beast that walked around on all fours. Like Godzilla, who is Toho's official English name for Gojira, Anguirus' first English name was Angelus. This was even before the US version of the film, which I will cover soon, but Toho did finally copyright the name Angerus by the 1970s. It was stated in the film that Angerus had more than one brain in his body, allowing him to react faster than other monsters. This helped explain away the filming error that actually sped up the battle between Godzilla and Angerus. Although Angerus was originally planned to have an atomic breath too, he instead had a sonic roar <laughs> which caused Osaka Castle to crack before the two monsters destroyed it. However, being the king of the monsters that he is, Godzilla eventually beat Angerus by biting his neck and setting his opponent on fire with his atomic breath. Usually Godzilla movies end after the monster battle, but this was only halfway through the movie. A news report states that Godzilla left the ruin of Osaka out into the ocean. The main human characters try to pick up the pieces of their lies, hoping that Godzilla will not return. Unfortunately, it's reported during a company party that Godzilla sunk one of the Tuna Company ships and the people search in pursuit. Finding Godzilla on a mountainous glacier, the Air Force attempt to destroy Godzilla with bombs, with no success. As Godzilla moves towards the ocean, Kobayashi attempts at distracting him, but he is killed crashing into the side of the mountain. Although he is devastated, Tsukioka suggests using bombs and missiles on the mountain to bury Godzilla in an ice avalanche. After a lengthy bombing, Godzilla is finally defeated, buried alive by the ice and snow. With the threat of the monster finally behind him, Tsukioka is relieved that he was able to avenge his friend. Unfortunately, Godzilla Raids Again was not as well received in Japan but this was made worse when it was localized for American audiences. American producers at ABPT Pictures wanted to use footage from Godzilla Raids again to make their own movie, The Volcano Monsters. Toho even sent them the costumes for Godzilla and Angerus to film new footage. However, by 1957, ABPT Pictures went out of business, and the film was never completed, and the monster suits were eventually lost in the process. The U.S. distribution rights were then acquired by Paul Schreibman, who decided to make a new edit of Godzilla Raids again, but he stripped Godzilla of his identity. Believing that audiences would be confused by Godzilla returning after his death by the Oxygen Destroyer, they chose to rename this second Godzilla as Gigantus. To cement this, footage from other science fiction films and newsreels were used to explain that Gigantus and Angerus were prehistoric fire monsters awakened in the 20th century. Here you see a member of the Anguirus family. The dub itself was a poor translation. <laughs> Trying to please a woman is like swimming the ocean. <laughs> ah, banana oil. Even Godzilla himself was dubbed over frequently with the roar of Anguirus. <laughs> On May 21st, 1959, Gigantus the Fire Monster was released to American audiences, who were quick to point out that Gigantus was really Godzilla. Distribution rights to the film fell through the cracks by the 1980s, and Toho demanded that the film have its proper title when it was released on VHS and shown on TV broadcast in the US, even though the bad translation calling Godzilla as Gigantus is still present. This was also true for Classic Media's DVD, which comes with both the original Japanese release alongside the American version. The Criterion Collection on Blu-ray, however, only has the original Japanese release with newly translated English subtitles. It's unfortunate that a new dub hasn't been made to be able to let newer and younger fans watch and enjoy this film in English, even though I myself prefer to watch Godzilla movies with subtitles. Despite the horrible handling of its English localization, Godzilla Raids Again does serve an important purpose in the franchise. While some have tried to say that Godzilla battling Angerus is a metaphor for the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union, its message is a bit simpler than that. 
Much like the original Godzilla film, Godzilla Raids Again is more of a metaphor for the second atomic bomb dropped on Japan during World War II. The destruction of Osaka, much like the destruction of Tokyo the year before, serves to mirror both Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As for Godzilla himself, he would not return for seven whole years in 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla, which saw a submarine free the King of the Monsters from his icy prison to wreak havoc on Japan once again. Overall, I think Godzilla Raids Again is a bit underrated. I really enjoy the monster action, especially considering it's the first time Toho had two monsters fighting. The human characters serve the plot a lot better than many of the Godzilla sequels, and there is good reason to feel remorse about poor Kobayashi. It may not be as good as the original 1954 classic, but it is certainly much better than Godzilla's Revenge, that's for sure. Unless Toho finally makes a new English dub, I can only recommend watching the original Japanese version with subtitles. The American version is only good for historical purposes, especially since that narrator just won't shut up. I started waving. But what do you think? Have you seen Godzilla Raids again? And do you think Toho should finally release a new international English dub? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I have more retro reviews, including more in the Godzilla franchise coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one.